Hi! In this third video tutorial we will discuss about selectors. Testbench is essentially about commanding browser to simulate user interactions. To instruct whether interactions like clicks or keyboard input is targeted, we must be able to refer parts of the user interface. This is why selectors are such an essential concept. There are different types of selectors for different kind of needs. Using DOM identifiers is probably the most natural method to select elements. Identifiers also makes your tests more stable. For example, we could randomize the button order in our calculator example and our tests would still run correctly. The downside of identifiers is that you need to assign them in your application code. In Vardin and Quit applications, the method is called setDebugID. Even though you wouldn't use plain ID selectors, you should note that other selector types aid from identifiers as well. Testbench provides a special selector type for Vardin. Let's look at those selectors while we have identifiers on. I have modified the test application a bit to easily disable identifiers. Now you can see how clicks are recorded without them. I will copy those two mouse clicks to testbench test so you can easily see them how they actually look in the code. Varian selectors route to the nearest identifier in the DOM and then use the widget hierarchy to the actual target. Probably the most powerful selector type is XPath. It may be familiar for you if you have, for example, worked with XSLD transformations. At first glance, XPath selectors may look a bit complex, but when you know the basics, XPath is probably the tool you want to use. Especially if you're building your tests manually. A valuable tool when writing selectors is a good browser inspector like Firebook or those built into WebKit based browsers. The recorder can also build XPath selectors. XPath is most often used if you move Vardin selector type to a lower priority. With XPath, one can use DOM structure, properties, and even simple functions to build short but intelligent selectors. In this calculator example, we select elements to be clicked by their text content. There are several free tutorials for learning XPath. If you are not familiar with it yet, do yourself a favor and spend a moment with one of them. These were the most essential selector types. Testbench supports several others out of the box, like using CSS selectors or playing class names. Check the documentation of PyClass if you wish to learn more about them. In the next episode, I will show you how smart selectors and some intelligent Java code can make your tests far more powerful than those simple recordings that repeat some simple user interaction. Thank you for your interest.